Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mr. David Frazier, Director of Athletics at the Rutherford High School, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2019-2020 Winter and Spring Athletics Virtual Awards Ceremony. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our Superintendent, Mr. Jack Hurley, our Principal, Mr. Frank Morano, our Assistant Principal, Mr. Nick DeBarry, and all the members of our Board of Education for their constant support of our athletic program and our student athletes. I'd like to thank our Booster Club, especially our President, Ms. Kristen Marin, for all they do to honor and support our student athletes each year. I'd like to thank our coaching staff and our athletic trainer for the countless and selfless hours they put in, not only to make our teams better, but to make our student athletes better people. And last, my assistant, Ms. Camille Haydorn. No words can describe, just a simple thank you for all that you do for our athletic program. Now, as you're watching from the comforts of your home, I hope that you are safe and healthy during these unprecedented times. When this new year came in and we made our resolutions, none of us would have guessed we'd be where we are in 2020. But the worldwide pandemic, ongoing protests for social injustice, and our quote unquote normal lifestyle seeming light years away, this current state of our new normal puts a lot of stress on all of us. I know it might be hard to see right now, but in time, our bulldog strength, will, and resolve will help us to move forward where we will come out even stronger and even a better Bulldog family and nation. Tonight from our home studios, uh, myself and our coaching staff will honor and celebrate the accomplishments and achievements of our winter and spring athletes. Now, our production budgets uh, and our cramp home studios give us about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes worth of footage. So please make the time to sit, watch, and enjoy this evening. And that doesn't include any of our outtakes, Easter eggs, or bonus footage. Now, as an FYI, we'll make this video available to all of our athletes and families so that you can download it and watch it at your leisure in the future. Apologize in advance for any technical issues or gaffes or goose, you know, budget production. But I hope that you're able to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ceremony. First up this evening, head coach of our back-to-back -back NJIC Colonial Division Girls Basketball Champions, Coach Eddie Guy. First, I want to thank Mr. Morano, Mr. DeBarry, Mr. Fraser for all of their support. I would also like to thank Mrs. Haydorn for everything that she does. Finally, thank you to my staff, Cheryl Botmalfa, Andrew Vanderhoof, and Gianna Muscio for all the time and effort that they put in to make this program successful. I can't do it without them. The Rutherford girls basketball team had another successful season. We finished with a 21-8 record. We won the league title to make it back-to-back -back league championships and advanced to the championship game of the NJIC tournament and the sectional semifinals of the state tournament. This group had a great mix of senior leadership as well as talented underclassmen. They worked hard and only wanted to win and get better. The basketball season is long and grueling, and we went up against some of the best teams around. We sought out some of the best competition and accepted challenging games against Wayne Valley, Sea Caucus, and Riverdale, all of whom won their respective leagues in the Big North. We never backed down and looked forward to these challenging games. Even when things got rocky in the middle of the season, we were able to regroup and come together to win some big league games and make a run in the state and NJSE tournament. The most memorable game would probably be our last regular season game of the year against a solid Glenrock team. For the Glenrock game, it came down to this. If we won, we would win the league. This game was in Glenrock, a gym that we have not won in since 2012. It was a typical defensive battle where we hung on for a one-point win. One of the big reasons for hanging on to that win was the leadership of our seniors, who stayed calm and in control even when Glenrock made a late fourth quarter run. This win gave us some much needed confidence and momentum going into the state tournament. This team loses four seniors who are a huge part of what this makes this program successful and they cannot be replaced. They steadily got better over the last four years to lead us to back-to-back -back league championships and 20 win seasons. However, there are some very talented underclassmen who are ready to take on more leadership roles and continue to show why this team has been successful. Here is the 2019-2020 NJIC Colonial Division Champions. Freshmen, Leah Barna, Aliyah Torres, Natalie Verone, 
Hannah Tobin. Sophomores, Naki Kenefu, Veronica Amatucci, Jocelyn Rodriguez, who is second team all league, Harmony Marquez, first team all league, third team all county. Juniors, Ava Shivey, Katie Whaley, Olivia Nicodemo. Mm -hmm. And now our seniors. Manager, Sam Beals. Where would we be without Sam? Sam was our manager and put in the same amount of time as the rest of the players and was at every practice and every game showing true dedication. Now the players. Mia Capobianco. Mia was our point guard for the past three seasons and was pivotal in winning some big games. On a team of players who all wanted to play fast and very often out of control, Mia was the one to slow it down and keep everything in order. She was one of the smartest players on the team and often made plays and threw passes that no one else were able to do because of how well she understood the game and saw plays unfolding. Mia was a two-year All-League award winner and she will be missed. Erin Augustopher. Erin rarely put up amazing stats, but she always filled the stat line. Erin did the dirty work. She was often overshadowed but made her mark and was vital in all of our big wins and was a, such a big part of this team the last four years. Erin could play every position and very often guarded the other team's best player, whether it was a guard or a forward. It didn't matter. Erin was tough. Even when she was severely undersized, she went after people and never backed down, just always did what she was asked. Some games you wouldn't notice Erin. So you look down at the stat sheet and saw that she had six points, six rebounds, three steals, three assists, and held the other team's best player to under their average. And she did that almost every night. For her efforts, Erin was a two-time All-League player. Amelia McCarthy. Amelia. Amelia was a four-year starter and the team captain. If you were to tell me when she was a freshman that Amelia would be the captain of the team, I probably would not have believed you. Amelia has come a long way from an all-over-the-place kind of player who just wanted to go, go, go to one that was calm, cool, and collected in her junior and senior years, especially in big games. More importantly, in the past two years, we saw Amelia mature into a responsible, helpful, committed young woman. On the court, Amelia was a four-year starter and honestly was just fun to watch. She was fearless and went after people. Her ability to get to the rim was impressive, and she was a tireless worker who always gave it her all. Probably the game I'll remember the most with Amelia was way back in her freshman year. It had to be maybe her third game. We were playing a solid Garfield team in Garfield. And with the game tied with about eight seconds left, Garfield with the ball in the double bonus. We told the team, play solid defense, don't foul, just get a stop. What does Amelia do? Swipes and steals the ball at half court from their senior 1,000-point scorer point guard and hit a game-winning layup at the time expired. She just went out and played. For her efforts, Amelia was a second-team All-League selection as a sophomore and a two-time first-team All-League selection in her junior and senior seasons. Jay Lee Torres. Jay Lee was a four-year starter, and she was the player that other teams marked. She was a player where other teams had to know where she was. She was our first or second-leading scorer in all four years. She usually had the team's best defender on her, she was a basketball player. She finished her career at Rutherford as a four-time All-League player, with three of them being first team, over 1,000 points, and over 100 three-pointers made. If Jay was open, she was going to make the shot. She had multiple 20-point games throughout her career and was a vital part of our league championships and any big win that we had. If Jay Lee was on and she was scoring, we were very hard to stop. Jay, C Jay Lee also improved her defense tremendously the last couple of years. She also showed perseverance. She had an amazing year and always came out on top. She was a relentless worker who never gave up and always wanted to get better, as seen by her off-season work ethic. Jay Lee finishes her career at RHS as one of the top 10 all-time leading scorers with 1,076 career points, 105 three-pointers made, a second-team all-league distinction as a freshman, and was a unanimous three-time First team all league winner in her sophomore, junior, and senior seasons. Mm. 
And now for a couple of special awards. First, we have the Coaches Award. This was a tough award to give as there were multiple deserving players. I decided that this year's Coaches Award goes to Erin Augustifer. Erin was a player who did the dirty work. She was never in the spotlight and was often overshadowed by her teammates because she was the one that was grabbing rebounds, shutting people down on defense, and playing physical under the basket against bigger, stronger opponents. She was clutched from the foul line in some big games, and although she is not the biggest player, she often played like it, not backing down to anyone. Teammate Award. This was a very close award that the players vote on. Multiple players received multiple votes. But this year, the Teammate Award goes to Mia Capobianco. Mia's teammates voted her the best teammate because of all the things that she helps with. She was always helping out the underclassmen from everything to drills and offering advice. It was helpful to the varsity team with her steady play and level-headedness. She was always there for everyone and would be one of the first ones to help out a teammate in need. And finally, to the graduating seniors, not just the basketball team, but all athletes. No one predicted that the spring season was not going to happen. It was devastating to hear. But everyone leaned on each other, stayed positive, and got through these unprecedented times together. Take that bulldog pride, determination, and strength with you going forward. And always remember, as Mr. Fraser says, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. Congratulations and good luck in everything that you do. I know you will all be great. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Guy. And next up, Coach James Parnfiello, Boys Varsity Basketball. Hello, everyone. Coach Parnfiello here, representing the Boys Varsity Basketball team for Rutherford High School. Hope everyone is safe and doing well during this difficult period of time. Um, without further ado, I'd like to thank everyone that helped make this winter sports season possible, Mr. Frazier, Ms. Major, and all the other winter sports coaches, particularly my staff, Coach Poder, Coach McGorry, and Coach John Parnafiello for everything they do during the season and in our off season. Okay, Without them, there's no way this season could have been as successful as it was. We finished this past season with a final record of 16-12. and 12. This was a four-win improvement from last season and a major step in the right direction for our program. Dispelling many beliefs that this would be a rebuilding year, we finished with a 9-7 league record, which featured two convincing home wins versus two of the top three teams in our league. First-year starter sophomore Patrick Rogers led the team in points and rebounds and was a unanimous first-team all-league selection. Dominic Ciani, a first-year point guard, became a defensive stopper, and he led the team in assists and steals along the way. Our contributions from our seniors, both in the starting lineup and coming off the bench, was tremendous throughout the season. We will speak about those seniors a little later. I would like to mention a couple other names, juniors Brendan Kelly and Evan Ward, for their defensive prowess, they have great potential and should hopefully look to step into starting roles next season. Two freshmen that I'd like to mention who will be receiving letters are Tariq Bissick and Ahmet Jerkovic. They had invaluable experience as freshmen and we look forward to great things to come in the future. Other sophomores who will be receiving letters are Josh Khalil who was a very good shooter, who played JV and varsity for us, and Zach O'Rourke, who again was a great defensive player, very good passer. We look for big things from those two young men as well next season. Advancing to the second round of the state tournament was a nice accomplishment for this team. This was done so in nothing short of spectacular fashion. I would like to mention that we were the 13th seed going into the state tournament, on the road versus a heavily favorite fourth-seeded Caldwell High School. Upsetting this Caldwell team, which had 20 wins on the season, was nothing short of thrilling. Resilience, passion, and belief were pillars of this group of young men for Rutherford. These traits showed by one of our best leaders hitting a game-tying three-pointer to tie the game at the end of regulation. <laughs> And 
then to have our senior captain ice the game in the final seconds of overtime with a three-point play. All of this was done after trailing by double digits at halftime. Moments like these will be remembered by these players and coaches forever. I am truly proud to call this group of young men winners both on and off the court. Now for our senior varsity boys basketball letter winners. Our first senior, Denzel Griffith. Denzel was a backup big man for us coming off the bench. Although Denzel came to our program as a ninth grader, having seldom played basketball through middle school, he became an important piece for our team. Denzel's ability to rebound the basketball and use his athleticism on both ends of the court made him a valuable piece for us. Denzel will be continuing his academic career next year at Montclair State University and he will be studying biology. Here Denzel will be a part of the ROTC National Guard program. Our next senior, Jacob Gomez. Jacob Gomez, who is known for his dominance on the diamond as a pitcher, became a key member of our team this past season. Jacob did not play basketball as a junior, but came back to the team this season and provided great depth as a guard forward for our team. Jacob was a willing passer and an aggressive defender who could knock down perimeter shots. He made several passes this season that had the entire crowd in awe by his accuracy and power, throwing the ball the full length of the court several times. Jacob will be attending Old Dominion University, where he will be a member of their baseball team. Nick Smith was a guard and a key reserve for our team this season. Ball handling, passing, and shooting were some of Nick's strengths that he brought to our team. Nick improved each of his four seasons at Rutherford High School significantly, and that was a testament to his commitment to our program, both during the season and everything we did in the offseason. Nick will be continuing his education next year at the University of Rhode Island. Our next senior, Jack Carr. Jack's shooting prowess helped make him a very difficult cover for many of our opponents. He routinely would hit key shots to open things up for many of our big men out of respect for his ability to knock down shots from the perimeter. A common theme from this young men is steady improvement throughout the four years they played high school basketball. After waiting his turn until midway through his junior season to see varsity action, Jack never looked back when given his opportunities. Jack worked as hard his senior year as any player I have ever been around. Whether it was at practice or transforming his frame by working out almost every day at the gym before school, Jack set a great example for our younger players. Jack will be attending Manhattan College next season where he will be continuing his education in mechanical engineering. Our next senior, Messiah Porter. Messiah provided great size and athleticism, and this helped him emerge as a two-year varsity player for us. Messiah provided a shot-blocking presence, added grit and toughness, and was a valuable offensive threat for our team. The confidence Messiah gained from his junior year catapulted him from being a JV player at the beginning of his junior year to one of our best players during some points of his junior season before unfortunately experiencing a tough injury during his junior season messiah was able to bounce back and pick up where he left off his senior season messiah will be continuing his education at caldwell university he will be studying accounting and he will be playing on their sprint football team our final senior player is jack debarry Jack DeBarry is our lone four-year varsity player. Jack exemplified what it means to lead by example, and this season it emerged as a vocal leader as well. Jack developed a perimeter game this year, 
where he could make shots and handle the ball well for a forward or center at times for us. His versatility and ability to change his game from an interior player offensively and defensively to someone who could play every position on the floor was his greatest strength and put each one of his teammates in their best position to succeed. Jack will be attending Delaware University and will be studying business next year. The winner for best teammate goes to one of our senior leaders. This young man was typically the first player in the gym for practices and games, and this helped make everyone better and more accountable. We speak about being a family as a program, and this player would organize gatherings. He would give teammates rides to and from practices and games, and he found ways to include everyone. He not only cared about his performance, but for the greater good of each one of his teammates and Rutherford basketball. Selflessness is what comes to mind when I think of this young man. Always putting the team above his own accomplishments and abilities, sometimes to my chagrin, Jack DeBarry was as good of a teammate that I have ever been around as a player and a coach. This year, our best teammate award goes to senior Jack DeBarry. Our final award is our coaches award. Four years ago, I was the freshman coach and had the privilege to coach all of these young men directly for their entire high school basketball career. Some players come into high school having been touted as superstars or the next big thing for our high school programs. Meanwhile, other players like this young man was not selected to even the eighth grade travel team. At this crossroads in a young athlete's life, it would have been much easier for him to give up on playing this game. Fortunately, in this case, the opposite occurred. This young man tried out and made the freshman team where he eventually became one of our starters. He outworked and outtrained people and eventually became a JV starter as a sophomore. And prior to an injury I spoke about during his junior year, played a major role as a JV starter and a varsity reserve. This young man did everything that was asked of him during each season at Rutherford High School and then furthered his love for the game and passion by playing competitive basketball for his AAU program and in our summer and fall leagues over the past four years. I will always admire this young man for his ability to not allow someone else to determine his fate as an athlete. Messiah Porter remained determined, proud, and destined while staying eager to better himself and his team with all of his hard work. This year's Coach's Award goes to Senior Messiah Porter. Thank you, Coach Parnafiello. And next up, Boys and Girls Winter Track, Coach Curtis Arce. Good evening, and welcome to the 2019-2020 Virtual Varsity Winter and Spring Banquet. I'd like to start off tonight by thanking a couple people for their efforts to make all this happen. Mr. Frazier, Mr. Hurley, and Mr. Morano, Thank you for, for all the hard work you've put in during these unfortunate times. Thank you for providing this opportunity to allow all winter and spring coaches to properly honor our 2019-2020 varsity athletes, and more importantly, to honor and celebrate our 2020 senior class. I'd also like to give a special thank you to Camille Mazur. Without you, my job would be impossible. I'd like to congratulate all the student athletes who have worked so hard to be honored here tonight. Finally, I would like to thank all my assistant coaches. They are Frank Viola, Justin Van Dyke, AJ Tesserero, and Blake Broncato. Your efforts in helping train our athletes to perform the best of their ability is better than any coaching staff in the county. I will start with the boys winter track team. Um, after graduating a very strong senior class, 
the boys' team had a rebuilding year this year. We had many new faces at the varsity level. I was happy to see a tremendous improvement throughout the season for many of our athletes. The team results from this season does not reflect the efforts by those put forth each and every day in practice and in competition. I am excited to see our underclassmen perform next season, but I'm also saddened to see our current senior class leave. I will now introduce the 2019-2020 Boys Winter Track Program. Sophomore, Christopher Marquez. Juniors, Cal Chase, Jung So Lim, Vishu Mangukia, Andrew Rettenberger, and Berker Zoy. Now for the seniors. Noah Fernandez. Noah was the top shot putter for the boys this season. Noah had a tremendous work ethic throughout his entire high school career. He was always doing drills off to the side trying to improve any type of throw he was trying to perform. His mark of 37 feet was a career high indoor. That is Noah Fernandez. Christian Miko. Christian was another thrower in our program the last couple of years. He was very consistent in his throws, and his mark of 32 feet was a personal best this season. Christian Miko. Jacob Masiak. Jacob was the true leader of our team this year in the indoor season. Jacob has been a distance runner for Rutherford for the last four years. He has worked so hard during practice and was one of the most competitive athletes every time he stepped on the track. He always put 100% effort into everything every, every time he competed. He was often referred to as a bad man during competition because when all the other athletes were slowing down at the end of a long race, you could see that he was just speeding up, doing everything he could to try to pass them at the very end. There was never a lack of effort from Jacob, and this quality will carry with him through the rest of his life. That is the 2019-2020 Boys Winter Program. I will now finish the boys' varsity team with the best teammate and the coach's award. I'll first start with the best teammate. The best teammate award is voted on by the peers, everybody in the program, and unanimously was voted that Vishu Mangukia was our best teammate award winner. Finally, we have our coach's award. This one is voted on by the coaches, and unanimously we picked this year's captain, Jacob Macia. Congratulations. I'm back again to introduce the 2019-2020 Girls Indoor Varsity Track Team. I'll first start with a season recap from the girls this season. They had a tremendous season. The team During the team meets this season, the girls finished near the top of the NGIC Conference, the Bergen County, and the States. At the NGIC Conference meet, the girls finished second, missing out on a conference championship by only five points. At the Bergen County Relays, the girls finished third amongst all small schools. Along with a great team success in the indoor season, there were some notable individual efforts worth highlighting. I will honor these individuals' achievements when I present their names. I will now introduce the 2019-2020 Indoor Varsity Track and Field Athletes. Freshman, Samantha Kazmarek. Sophomores, Bridget Sullivan, Sophia Hanna, Ella Bagnolo. Juniors, Aaron DeMeo. Isabella Singh. It is worth noting that at the NGIC meet this year, Isabella broke the NJIC meet record and school record in the 55-meter hurdles, and she also broke the school long jump record. These efforts allowed her the opportunity to be awarded the first team all Bergen County honors in long jump. I will now introduce our 2020 seniors. Skylar Ahern. Skylar made a transition from a sprinter to a thrower this season. She was very consistent in all her throws and worked very hard during practice to perform to the best of her abilities. Skylar Ahern. Nibuija Knefu. Many of you know Nibuija as a tennis for her tennis skills, but she has also been a major contributor in the Rutherford track program her entire high school career. She has the ability to do almost every single event at a very high level. 
Her main events throughout the season are the 800 meter run, the high jump, and the triple jump. At the NJIC Championships, she finished second in the 800 meter, earning her second team all NJIC honors. That is Nabuja Knefu. Shannon Kresge. Shannon has been a thrower for the Bulldogs for the last couple of years. Shannon worked very hard throughout practice and improved greatly since her first year as a thrower. Her mark of 22 feet 5 inches was her personal best this season. That is Shannon Kresge. Kerry O'Keefe. Kerry was a valuable member of the shot put team relay this indoor season. She finished 12th at the NJIC conference meet and 11th at the Bergen County Relays, which helped her relay team finish second in Bergen County Small Schools. That is Carrie O'Keefe. Finally, we have Jenna Rogers. Everyone in the community knows Jenna as one of the best high jumpers in the nation. But what many may not know is that she is one of the best all-around track athletes in Bergen County history. Jenna was named first team all Bergen County in the pentathlon, where she broke her own school record and missed setting the county record by just a couple points. She finished her indoor career by recording a high jump mark of five feet, nine inches. This was the fourth highest mark in the country and the highest mark in the state in the 2019-2020 indoor season. Jenna had a tremendous success in the shot put as well. She was one of the top shot putters in the entire state. At the state meet of champs, she finished 11th and her mark of 39 feet 9 inches was the 10th furthest throw in New Jersey throughout the entire season. This winter season was Jenna's best all-around performance as a Rutherford track and field athlete. That is the 2019-2020 varsity girls team. Finally, I'll end with our two special awards given to the two female athletes at the end of the winter season. First, I'll start off with the Best Teammate Award. The Best Teammate Award is voted on by the team, and it is no surprise that the team had voted on Naibuja Knefu for the Best Teammate this 2019-2020 season. <laughs> Finally, we have the Coaches Award. It was unanimous pick that this year's Coaches Award goes to our captain, Jenna Rogers. Congratulations. Congratulations and thanks, Coach Arcy. Next up, Boys and Girls Swimming, Coach Steve Dunn. Hello all, Coach Dunn here to talk about the 2019-2020 Boys and Girls Swim Team. But before I do that, I'd be remiss if I didn't express the disappointment in the manner at which we're doing it. The class of 2020 has done a lot of tremendous things for themselves, the school, and this community. And obviously, no one would choose to celebrate their accomplishments virtually. But one thing that I do believe is one of the best assets a human being could have is the ability to overcome adversity. And the class of 2020 certainly has faced their fair share through their senior year. And just maybe one day when you're sitting across the table from a future employer and you tell them you're from the class of 2020, it'll sing a little different tune knowing what you had to go through. With that being said, we're gonna get right into the boys swim team. The boys swim team was five and one this year and second in the conference. And as you'll see, I'll only have one senior swimmer to talk about, we were a very young squad. But what we lacked in experience, we gained with kids who were willing to do whatever was best for the team. Swimming is a unique sport because there's, there's four different strokes. There's different lengths of each stroke that has to be swam. So it's easy to get into a comfort zone in what event you're swimming. But in order for a team to be successful, you got to ask kids to do things out of their comfort zone and something that is going to challenge them in a different way. And that is what I'm going to remember most about this team, that we had a group of kids, young kids, that were willing to do whatever was best for the team and why we impressively finished second in the conference this year. So without further ado, let's get into all our, all our varsity award letter winners. Freshman, Declan Mellett. Our sophomores was Matthew Bronico, Nevo Indoor Trung, Andrew Kitchab, and Caleb 
Makasiah, Juniors, Eli Chi, Jonathan Ramick, Rashab Shah, and Steven Tassillo. And now on to our seniors, our two seniors. Our first one was our stat this year, Nicholas Rendeen. Nicholas was a first year stat, and I'll tell you, it's a harder job than you think going in there and scoring a meet. Things happen pretty fast. So what Nicholas did was, it was tremendous, and he did everything with a smile on his face. I was very happy and proud to have Nick around the program, and he's going to be missed, missed next year. That's Nicholas Rendeen. And my one senior boy swimmer is Christopher Guzman. Christopher tried swimming for the first time this year. Um, I coached him for football for the previous three years and never thought he'd join the swim team. And frankly, when he did, I, I, was, I was surprised. And he swam exactly the way I thought he was going to swim. Not very well at first because he's never done it. But you want to talk about someone who's improved throughout the year. He was a coach's dream. He, um, he was a freestyle for us. He did uh, 50 and 100 freestyles. But the most impressive thing about Chris is the way how he picked up and got better week after week. Um, it's funny. I wish I, I wish I timed him at the beginning of the season. But I know that he must have taken off 10 to 15 seconds off his 50 free from the first day he jumped in to the last. Um, Chris is going to be going to Keene University, but not before joining the U.S. Army. Um, so Chris is, Chris is one of the good guys, and we're going to miss him very much from this program. That's Christopher Guzman. Now to my two awards for the boys team. First award is a coach's award. Goes to a kid that you just absolutely love to coach, that would do anything that they, that they can do to help their team. And that was a pretty simple decision. That's Christopher Guzman. So Chris, congratulations. And lastly is the best teammate. The best teammate award uh, is exactly that, is what the kids vote on and what uh, who they think was the best the best for this team, the, the kid that was most dedicated to this program. And the, uh, this year's 2019-2020 Boys Best Teammate Award goes to Eli Chi. Congratulations, Eli. And now we're off to the girls' swim team. The girls' swim team was a very successful 7-3 and three this year, which included making the playoffs and winning a meet against Belvedere before losing a tightly contested one against Madison in the state semifinals. This girls' swim team, this senior class, has won at least one playoff meet for all four years they were in high school. And to the best of my knowledge, that is the first time either the bo a boys or girl team has ever done that here at Rutherford in the swim program. This senior class you'll see is going to be a little different than on the boys side. There's a lot more of them. Um, and you're going to have a lot of kids that have been here for three or four years that have won letters throughout the, throughout the course of their careers. And it's a group that's going to be bittersweet to say goodbye to. But I know that they're off to bigger and better things. But simply, this senior class is, is not replaceable. So without further ado, let's get to our Varsity Letter Award winners. Our freshmen, Caroline Gamelli, Vanessa Centorian, Lucia Andler. Our sophomores, Gabby Jimenez, Dana Saria. Our juniors, Marina Armanius, Megan Lichtenberger, and Christina Rodriguez. And now on to that senior class. First up is gonna be our stat, our girl stat, Isabel Andler. Isabel was a first year stat, and just like I said with Nick, it's it's a harder job than than you would think it is with how fast it goes. And not only was was Izzy a first year stat, so was Nick. So they were both had no idea what to do at first. They were learning from whoever they were working with, learning from each other, and they both, they both worked very well together as well. Izzy was a pleasure to have as part of the team, and she will be missed um, more than she knows. That's Izzy Andler. Next, Jen Natelkos. Boy, uh, Jen was a first-year swimmer, never tried it before, and I am sure glad that she came out for the team. I mean, what a... 
What a wonder to coach. Um, a kid that worked as hard as any kid that I've coached uh, just to get just to get the basics down and to to become a better swimmer. Uh, she was she was an absolute pleasure is all I could say about her. She had a tremendous attitude. She was a 50 freestyler for us and she improved a lot throughout the year. Um, Swimming is a sport that you kind of have to do year year after year to be very good at it. But I, I was extremely impressed with how A, how hard she worked and B, how much better she got throughout the year. She'll be going to down in the bayou, LSU, and she'll be going for pre-nursing and she's going to make one heck of a nurse. That's Jen Natelkos. Next, Sarah Scotty. Sarah, this is her third varsity letter. Sarah, I'll tell you, always one of my favorite kids on the team. She swam all four years. She's just a, a wonderful kid. Uh, she did just about everything for us. She At first, she was more of a freestyle type kid, but by the end, she was swimming the 200 IM. She would do any stroke in a relay. She was just a, a great asset to the team. And that's Sarah Scotty. Next, Emily Muller. This is also Emily's third year as a varsity letter. Um, she was our breaststroke specialist. She kind of always has been. Now, she's done some other things, whether it's 100 free, 50 free. But her kind of forte was breaststroke. And she was very good at it. And I'll tell you, Emily is a uh, great attitude, great smile. And she'll be doing great things in life. She's going to be one that is... Uh, Sorely, sorely missed Emily. Emily next year will be attending the University of Tampa. Um, and I'll tell you, whatever she does, if she keeps that attitude with her, she'll be, uh, she'll be doing great things. That's Emily Muller. Next, Gabby Centorian. This is Gabby's third varsity letter. Um, Gabby is, uh, was always a sprint freestyler for us, but this year we needed someone to do distance. Now, if anyone knows anything about swimming or if you don't know anything about swimming, it's very similar to running. If you're a sprinter, say you do the 140 meter dash or 100 yard dash, whatever it is, um, and then they ask you to go run a 5K for cross country, it's a big difference. And it's similar to swimming. Gabby turned her 50 freestyle into a 500 freestyle, which is two laps to 20 laps. And she, she did it and she ended up enjoying it, which most kids would not. Um, and she actually ended up asking me to do the 500 by the end of the year, which surprised the heck out of me. But I, it's just the type of kid that Gabby is. She would do anything. Um, and it, it was just, it's just going to be, it's a shame to say goodbye to all of these kids. And Gabby's right in that group that uh, it's going to be missed dearly. Gabby's going to be attending the University of Arizona. We got some uh, kids going to some hot weather schools next year um, at University of Arizona for financing. That's Gabby Centurion. Next is Bridget Boylan. This is Bridget's third year as a varsity award uh, winner. Bridget did it all. She does every single stroke. I mean, if I would say one stroke, I loved, loved seeing her swim at was a butterfly. She was a great butterflyer, um, a, a, something that a lot of people don't want to do. Uh, the 100 butterfly, but she always did it. She did 200 IMs and anything that was asked, that's what Bridget did. And she she became a very good, good swimmer on this team. But just like everybody else, her her attitude, commitment, and her just her personality is what's going to be missed the most going into next year. Um, Bridget is going to be going down uh, in Wake Forest, down in North Carolina, and she's going to be studying biology into pre-med. So if you need any help in college, don't, don't call me, Bridget, because I couldn't help you with that. Uh, but that's Bridget Boylan. Next, Magda Sobaleska. This is Magda's fourth year as a varsity winner. And she was another one that she was a kind of a, could do every stroke well. Everything she did, she did it well. Magda kind of morphed into a 50 freestyle, 100 back a lot of times for us. But Magda has had times where she's done the 200 IM, which is one of every stroke. Um, she's, she could do distance. She could do anything you ask um, and is a great kid to have on a team because she's willing to do whatever's best for the team. That's Magda Sobaleska. Next is Ola Smachinsky. 
Ola. This is again her fourth year earning a varsity letter. And she, just like Magda, was a, a kid that could do it all. And she did a lot of fly for us, just like Bridget. Um, 100 back. I know she started doing a lot of breaststroke for us, but she is a, she is someone that no matter where you needed her, she would go into it. And she was always encouraging to all her teammates. Just a wonderful, wonderful kid to coach. Uh, you see her improving every single time she went out there. Uh, she's going to University of Temple to study neuroscience. So again, Magda, if you need help, I'm not the guy to talk to. So <laughs> that's Magda. I'm sorry, that's Ola. Ola Smichinski. Uh, next, Alexis Kitchab. This is Alexis's fourth year as a varsity uh, award winner. Now, Alexis, I mean, quite simply put, she's our superstar. She's the best swimmer we've had on the team for the last four years. Um, she has she has placed top three in the county. She's, she's just a super, superstar swimmer with a very bright future. Um, she's going to be attending Rowan University next year. I'll tell you, I'm so impressed with some of these, some of these universities these kids are going to. But Alexis is um, just great to have. Um, a club swimmer, but more than that, she was a great teammate. There's a beauty about when club swimmers come to high school where it's not about themselves, it's more about the team. And she really took that and ran with it. Um, we're going to be missing our superstar next year. That's Alexis Kitchab. And our last senior is our captain, Amy Lee. She's also a four-year varsity winner, um, another club swimmer, uh, another superstar in the water. And there's a reason that she was voted captain the last two years. I think it's one of the only kids I had as a two-year captain is because Amy's a winner. And it's, it's funny. It's When we go up against some of these teams that we don't know about or a team we know is going to be tight, Amy would be the first person and show me some of the girls' times or talk to me about I swim with this kid and she does this and you know maybe we can move people here. She's just she's smart, she's wise and she's just a pleasure, a pleasure to coach. That's Amy Lee. Our two awards, our first one is going to be a coach's award. The coach's award goes to goes to a kid that is just someone that someone that will do anything for the team and basically makes a coach's job easy. And this year, the 2019-2020 Coaches Award goes to Alexis Kitchab. Congratulations, Alexis. And our best teammate, our best teammate award voted on by the kids. Someone who probably could scream the loudest, cheers the hardest, and um, just a, an absolute pleasure to have. Uh, and that's going to be Sarah Scotty. Congratulations, Sarah. I hope everybody is uh, stay safe and well. Thanks for tuning in and. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Way to go, Coach Dunn. Next up, bowling coached by Mr. Dave Padilla. Dave Padilla retired this past school year, so the presentations will be made by yours truly, Mr. David Fraser, Athletic Director. Our 2020 bowling team. Numbers alone do not tell the whole story for our 2020 bowling team. They may have finished at the bottom of the Colonial Division, but they continue to persevere, learn, grow, and have fun representing the Rutherford High School bowling program in the Colonial Division. This young group of athletes will come back next year a little stronger, a little wiser, and prepare for the challenges ahead. This year's team was coached by Mr. Dave Padilla, who retired earlier in the year. I'd like to thank him for all he's done for our school community, as well as for our athletic program. This year's 2020 bowlers are freshman, Samantha Pashota, sophomores, Michaela O'Neill, Nicholas Grotowski, Faith Fawcett, and captain, Sam Cassiano. We look forward to the team's growth and success, as next year, Coach Angelides will be taking over the program. Congratulations to our 2020 bowling level. And finally, for our winter season, coached by Mr. Jeff Rehain, our boys varsity wrestling program. everyone. 
I hope that you're doing well and staying safe during these very strange days. Uh, I apologize if you hear some construction noise during the making of this video. They're putting in a new gas line outside my house and out of nowhere things can get a bit loud. So without further ado, I'm going to move on to the virtual wrestling dinner. Um, our wrestling program is certainly taking steps in the right direction. Um, my goal as a coach has always been to have one cohesive program from the third and fourth grade all the way through the twelfth grade. And I know things can get a little bit chaotic, but I truly believe we're doing the right thing. Um, if you couple that with some really fantastic dads who are taking their boys for outside training, uh, things are certainly trending in the right direction for the wrestling team. Um, this season, uh, we had two boys, Vinny Keeler and J.J. Hernanko. Uh, both finished their sophomore seasons with 20 wins. Uh, they had 20 wins as freshmen as well and both boys qualified for the region tournament. Um, our team also had sort of a nice season, team success. Um, we were able to qualify for the, for the states um, for the first time in many years. Um, so I think overall things are, 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 are looking up. Um, this year we only had one senior. Jaden, if you're listening, I have to tell you it was an absolute pleasure having you with us this year. Um, this is not the kind of sport that, uh, you know, boys come out during their senior year. Uh, it's extremely difficult. It takes years to build uh, that baseline set of skills. But you're a terrific kid. Um, we absolutely enjoyed having you, and you're going to be sorely missed. And that was uh, Jaden Luigas. He was our sole senior on the wrestling team this year. Um, the second major highlight was uh, this year's freshman. Uh, our freshman team finished second in the Bergen County Tournament. Um, we had two champions, Anthony Tardueno and Zach Krenenko, both won Bergen County Championships. Uh, Coach Dunn and I really couldn't be more excited to have this group back for the next three years. Uh, we were very excited about doing some training this summer and running practices and going back out to uh, Hopakong for the duels. Um, but unfortunately, during the situation, uh, especially with a sport like wrestling, I don't believe that's going to happen. Um, so we're excited for the future, um, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody in the fall, hopefully with a fresh start. So the first special award we're going to give for the wrestling team is the Coach's Award. Uh, Coach Dunn and I both agree that the Coach's Award is something that should be given to someone who does everything correctly. And that someone is sophomore J.J. Hernenko. Uh, he served as team captain this year. He's a great student. He behaves himself in the classroom. Uh, no one competes as hard as J.J., yet he always shows tremendous sportsmanship. And it's our privilege to give the Coach's Award this year to J.J. Hernenko. And the second special award we're going to give for the wrestling team is the Best Teammate Award. Uh, the Best Teammate Award should go to someone who always uh, thinks and acts with the best interests of the team in mind and has the ability to make the people around them better. Um, without a doubt, that person is sophomore Vin Keeler. He's receiving this award for the second year in a row uh, simply because Vin's the best. Um, he's the first one at practice. He's the last one to leave. And he has that special ability to get others on board with, with doing the right thing. And that's a quality that uh, all great leaders have, and Vin is certainly a leader within our program. Um, I suppose that's it. I miss everyone. I can't wait for things to get back to normal. Hopefully the fall will be a fresh start, um, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Take care and best wishes. Kicking off our spring sports, our boys varsity tennis program coached by Mr. Michael Mayerzak. When last year's tennis season came to a conclusion, I knew I was only graduating one senior, so I was super excited about this upcoming 2020 spring season. I was already thinking about what this group of young men could accomplish. 
I would have six of my seven players returning for another year, and all with experience on the varsity level. The singles lineup was rock solid, while there was going to be some healthy competition for the remaining two doubles team combinations. Here is the 2020 boys tennis team. Starting with the underclassmen, sophomores, first year varsity member playing doubles is Jay Kakadia, and second year varsity member playing first singles is Arnav Sundar. Juniors, we have second year varsity members both playing doubles, Harsh Herpara and Yusef Michael. Our seniors for the 2020 boys tennis team. First off is second year varsity member playing doubles, Jay Patel. After Jay played his entire first season at doubles last year, we were both looking forward to seeing how that experience would translate to this upcoming season. Jay worked hard during our initial week of practice. He showed much more confidence, improved ability, and definitely some more focus. Jay wanted to prove that he can be a force on the tennis court while always having a smile on his face and having a jovial attitude. Jay Patel. Third year member, varsity, third singles, Adrian Law. Adrian Law is one of the guys that continued to work on his game during the off season by practicing indoors and actually following tennis outside of the season. I know he was looking forward to some redemption at third singles this year and to show how much he improved. I know he would like to continue to play in college if his scheduling and course load allows. I know he will continue to play tennis in the future and will look forward to seeing that improved one-handed backhand and some new trick shots when he visits the courts. Third year varsity member and our second singles player, Riley Gajewski. Riley came off last season with the best record on the team and he has continued to improve. This year he seemed poised to repeat that stellar season as he practiced relaxed and with confidence. Riley is always super laid back and kept the team entertained. I counted on Riley to take on a bigger role this year and help guide this team to a strong season. As a result, Riley is also the captain in this year's team. I know you may trade the racket in for a guitar, but I hope you don't give up on tennis completely. One last senior that came out for the first time this year was senior Jorge Rodriguez. Although he never saw match play, I just want to thank him for coming out and being part of our tennis family for this abbreviated season. I would also like to thank my JV coach, Mr. Met, for all his time and dedication to the boys tennis program. Both of us would like to congratulate all the seniors for their hard work and dedication to both RHS and their respective sports teams over these past four years. I want to wish you all the best moving forward during this unprecedented time. Good luck in all your future endeavors. Finally, I would like to thank Dave Frazier for the opportunity to coach these outstanding young men. And last but definitely not least, thank you to Camille Major for everything she does to make a coach's job so much smoother. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. Thanks very much, Coach Mayor Zach. Next up, our Boys and Girls Spring Track Program, coached by Mr. Curtis Arce. Coach Arce back to introduce the Spring Boys Varsity Athletes. After coming off a positive winter season and gaining other talented boys this spring, we were excited to see the boys' team and where they would end up this season. As coaches, we knew we had talent to compete with the top teams in the conference and the county. The boys were ready to learn from their coaches and work hard. There was a great vibe during the first couple days of practice before we got shut down. After graduating some talented seniors from last year's team, we had many spots to fill. However, we were confident that these group of boys were able to compete at a high level. It is unfortunate they did not get a chance to prove themselves as a team in this 2020 season. I will now introduce the spring varsity track athletes. Sophomore, Christopher Marquez. Juniors, Weston Greenwood. Jung So Lim. Vishu Mangukia. Jonathan Remick. Andrew Rettenberger. Evan Ward, Berger Zoy. 
Finally, we have our seniors. I'll introduce these three seniors together. Robert Chinnery, Steven Cisneros, and Jonah Gucciera. These three boys are first-year track athletes who were expected to compete in the shot put and discus. I had full confidence that they were able to compete at a high level and surprise people around the NJIC in the county with their abilities. Matus Markinik, Shiva Madugu, Rhythm Singh. These three seniors were first-year varsity athletes. I was looking forward to seeing how they can contribute to the boys' team this year. Shiva would have been a thrower, Matus would have done some sprinting, and Rhythm was a distance runner. Next we have Christian Miko and Noah Fernandez. Christian and Noah were two of our veteran throwers on this year's team. They were both coming off great indoor seasons and were looking forward to seeing how they would compete in this spring. They both brought great work ethic to practice every single day and were leaders of our throwing team. Next up we have Christopher Guzman. Christopher, Christopher is a very versatile athlete. He was our top returning sprinter, middle distance runner, and thrower. He always put max effort into everything he did and could always count on him for some comic relief. Chris was also known around the county as a spicy guac guy. He wasn't, when he wasn't competing, he would walk around in a sombrero and a bag of chips and guacamole. He was a sensation in the, tr in the track and field community. Christopher will serve in the National Guard following graduation. Thank you for your service, Chris. Next up, we have Brian Iguanti. I had the privilege of coaching Brian in football and track since he was a freshman. Brian is one of, if not the most respectful and most coachable athletes I have ever coached. He was one, he was always super focused and did everything 100% effort. Brian was a runner and thrower for Rutherford. He was showing promise in the javelin before the season was cut short. Next, we have our captain, Jace, Jacob Masiak. After a strong indoor season, Jacob was ready to lead the boys' team this season. We, are expecting, we were expecting to have a strong distance team, and Jacob was ready for the challenge. Jacob was a captain in the indoor and the spring season. The coaches and I were very excited to watch Jacob compete this year. Next, we have Tristan Remick. Tristan worked all winter to rehab a leg injury that sidelined him during the indoor season. He was on, he was on track to be 100% to start the season and was one of our top returning distance runners. The coaches and I had no doubt that Tristan was going to have a breakout season this year. Finally, we have Ian Spatel. After taking a couple years away from the program, Ian was expected to be a valuable, ass, valuable athlete to our team. Ian was a very strong distance runner in the program. He always worked hard and always left everything he had on the track. This is our 2020 spring varsity boys track team. Finally, I will introduce the 2020 girls spring track team. After coming off a tremendous winter season, there are very high hopes for this girls team. We were looking forward to not only competing with the best, but we felt that we had the overall team talent to beat the best in the NJIC, the county, and even the state. There was a different mindset amongst the girls this year. As a coaching staff, we knew there was a chance to have a special season. It is truly unfortunate that this team was not allowed the opportunity to show how great they could have been. With that said, I will now introduce the 2020 girls track and field spring team. Freshmen, Sam Kosmarek. Sophomores, Natalie Gustafer, Ella Bagnolo, Sophia Hanna, Naki Knefu, Olivia Catafioris, Harmony Marquez, and Bridget Sullivan. Juniors, Aaron DeMeo, Ava Scheibe, Isabella Singh, 
Catherine Whaley. Finally, we have our seniors. Start off with Joanna Calvo. Jo Joanna has been a thrower for the Bulldogs for the last couple seasons. Joanna gives great effort throughout her time in the program. The coaches and I were looking forward to have her as an important part of our throwing team this season. It's Joanna Calvo. Mia Capabianco. Mia came into the season as one of our top all-around throwers. Mia was able to apply her athleticism to perform all three throws this spring. Her best event was a javelin where her mark of 98 feet from last season was a top mark on our team coming into this year. I am happy to announce that Mia will be joining the track and field program at Caldwell University next season. Mia Capabianco. Nibuija Knefu. Nibuija has been one of the most versatile athletes I have ever coached. Not many track and field athletes are distance runners and also successful jumpers. It was very impressive to watch Nibuija run an 800 or 400 meter hurdles and then immediately have to high jump or triple jump right after. Nibuija is an incredible athlete and it will be hard to replace her next season. That is Nibuija Kenefu. Kerry O'Keefe. Kerry came off a solid indoor season and was showing positive signs of taking her abilities to another level this spring. It is unfortunate that she, she did not have the opportunity to take the confidence from the indoor season and carry it over into the spring season. I feel that she was going to have a breakout season. Carrie O'Keefe. Jenna Rogers. Everyone knows about Jenna's physical abilities. She is one of the best athletes in the history of Rutherford High School, but Jenna's physical ability is not the only factor that makes her great. Genu Jenna's genuine phys personality and ability to overcome adversity is a true testament of her greatness. Jenna always puts the team first, and at the start of every season, she always asks what she needs to do to help the team. She could have been selfish and focused on her individual success, but that's not the type of person she is. Also, Jenna's ability to overcome adversity is what makes her one of the best athletes in school history. After being crowned national champ in the high jump as a freshman, Jenna had suffered multiple heartbreaking losses as well as multiple injuries. These unfortunate events were very hard for her, but she never quit and always stayed positive. Her ability to work through all negative outcomes in her career and still compete at the highest level is something that only true champions can do. Jenna's experience as a Rutherford High School athlete has paved the way for her future success at the University of Nebraska next year. Jenna Rogers. Sarah Scotty. Sarah has been a distance runner in the Rutherford program for multiple years. She has always given her best effort and worked very hard to be the best runner she could be. Sarah is very coachable. She trusted the plans the coaches had in place and always did everything to the best of her ability. Sarah Scotty. Finally, we have Jaylee Torres. Jaylee was coming out for the first time this season. She has, I have seen her play basketball, and I was very confident that she was going to be able to help our program achieve the success we had hoped this season. It is unfortunate that she did not get the opportunity to show how impactful she could have been for the Bulldogs this spring. Jaylee Torres. That is your 2020 spring girls varsity track team. Thank you, Coach Arcy. Next up, our baseball team, coached by Mr. Carmen Spina. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to first start off the virtual dinner by thanking Mr. Frazier for his outstanding leadership during this very difficult situation. I'd also like to take time to th thank my assistant coaches, Jamie Parnfiello and Andrew Vanderhoop for their commitment to the program. I would like to first start off the evening by reading off 
our leather winners that are underclassmen. First up, Alex Acosta, freshman. Next, Alex Gomez, freshman. Next, Pat Cerulli, sophomore. Danny Espinal, sophomore. Next up, Cal Chase, junior. Dominic Ciani, junior. Brendan Kelly, junior. Gabriel Francisco, junior. And Evan Alvarez. That rounds out a very talented group of underclass players that will continue the tradition of Rutherford High School baseball next season. And now for our seniors. Prior to announcing the players, I would like to first thank our two statisticians, Izzy Andler and Gabby Centurion. Both girls gave great commitment to the program and were a tremendous help for the past two years. First up, our first year leather winners for our seniors. Gregory Russo. Greg is a talented second baseman and pitcher. He would have provided depth for our infield and pitching help for our team. Solid contact hitter who excelled at making the routine play and was a very heads-up young man, very experienced baseball player, Greg Russo. Next up, first-year award winner, Meet Suhagaya. Meet was a tremendous outfielder that possessed great speed and range. He had high character and was a very savvy base runner. Meet would have provided not only great outfield defense for us, but could have been an outstanding base runner for us this, this season. Meet Suhagaya. First-year winner, Nick LaRosa. Nick was a first baseman who had a great glove and is an outstanding contact hitter. Nick's, Nick would have been in the mix to play first base in DH for us this season. Again, another great kid who provided great leadership for the younger players and was waiting for his chance to contribute this season. Nick LaRosa. Next up, first-year winner, Jake Schumann. Jake was a tremendous, high-character young man that played outfield for us. Jake was tremendously involved in our off-season program and would do anything for our program, would play any position, would do anything that was required for the team. Great young man, will sorely be missed next year, Jake Schumann. Next up, Luke Sorowick, another outfielder. Luke had a great glove and was an outstanding hitter. He put tremendous amounts of work in in preparation for the season. I would often see Nick at the, at the cages in September of October practicing, hitting off a tee. That's how committed he was for our program. Great kid, great character. Wish Luke the best of luck in his future endeavors. Luke Sorowick. Next up, senior right-handed pitcher Nick Smith. Nick was a tremendously talented young man, had high velocity, could spot a curveball, and would have been a part of one of the best pitching staffs in Bergen County. Tremendous athlete with a high upside. Nick Smith would have been a very, very big contributor this season. Next up, Dennis Gentile, another pitcher. Dennis had a great curveball and could spot his fastball at will. Dennis was waiting for his turn this year to contribute to the Bulldogs and would have provided great depth to our pitching staff. Dennis Gentile. And now for our second year leather winners that are seniors. Uh, senior Zach Musa, an outstanding young man that could play any position. Zach was a great teammate and willing to do anything for the benefit of the team. Zach will sorely be missed next year. Zach Musa. Next up, Jack Carr. Again, high character young man, played a flawless first base for us in 2019, would play any infield position to get himself onto the field, could also pitch. Jack Carr will truly be missed next year. 
an outstanding young man and baseball player. Now for our third year award winners, senior Eric Wernicke. Eric was an outstanding pitcher who has compiled a 10-0 record over his career. He has an overpowering fastball and a great curve, and Eric had his shining moment last year when he defeated Middlesex, who was Group 1 state champions in an independent game. Eric will be continuing his baseball career at Salve Regina University next year. Next up, Dominic Morrow, an outstanding catcher. Dominic possessed all the skills to handle one of the best pitching staffs in Bergen County. He will sorely be missed. Dominic would often catch four or five games a week without any rest. He was a true bulldog and will sorely be missed next year. And now on to our four-year award winners, senior C.J. Francisco. C.J. was a talented young man that has an outstanding glove, great hitter, batted over 400 last year, drove in 35 runs, first-team all-conference selection. Also, as a pitcher, threw a fastball over 85 miles an hour and threw a no-hitter against league rival Pompton Lakes last year. Season, CJ was poised to have a very big season for us, and he will continue his career at Division II University of the Sciences in Philadelphia. Next up, four-year award winner Jacob Gomez. Jacob has distinguished himself as one of the best pitchers in Bergen County. Over, four, over three years, he compiled a record of 20 wins, seven losses, he racked up 232 career strikeouts. He also made three-time uh, all-conference first team, uh, two-time all-county second team, and was also first team all-group two. Jacob will be continuing his career at Old Dominion University next year in Virginia. I would like to take this time to thank the seniors and their families for giving me four of the best years in program history. I thank you for your commitment, passion, and desire, and I would like to wish all of you success and happiness in your future endeavors. Thank you very much, and have a great evening. As I begin tonight's softball presentation, I must acknowledge a few people who have played a significant role in this program and to me personally. Mr. Hurley, Mr. Morano, Mr. DeBarry. Again, thank you for your continued opportunity to coach here at RHS. To Mr. Frazier, thank you for being the best athletic director any coach can ask for. To Camille Major, for her organization within the athletic office and her cheery personality. To my assistant coaches, Cheryl Bott, Kelly Santana, and Gianna Muscio, who bring a tremendous amount of knowledge, enthusiasm, and passion to our program. When thinking of the appropriate words to describe this year's softball season, a lot comes to mind. One great week of outstanding softball. Perfect weather, enthusiasm, great leadership from our seniors, and high expectations. Other words that describe the season were also unfortunate, unprecedented, sad. However, as a teacher and a coach, I believe we accomplished a great many of our goals that are part of our softball culture. These goals are to get better every day as players and people to move on from a bad play or a bad day because opportunity awaits us. My goal as a coach is to encourage young people to enjoy what life has to offer, have fun, and not take anything for granted, not school, not sports, friends, or beloved families. It's important to remember that, in fact, not only did we accomplish these goals, 
but we are smarter and better people because of this pandemic. We were successful because no one will forget the spring of 2020. Our character, our intelligence, and our courage has surpassed anything that we thought we were not capable of. I would like to introduce to you the 2020 Varsity Softball Team. Team Manager, Megan Lichtenberg. Players, Julia Similo, Veronica Amatucci, Jocelyn Rodriguez, Tony DeSalvo, Jordan Finelli. Now the senior class. There were eight seniors on the varsity softball team, the most in a very, very, very long time. Does this lost season make it that much sadder? Of course it does. We are all saddened that these student athletes were not allowed to play one last time. We as coaches have been fortunate to have been in their lives and are proud that all eight played for four years. The senior class is a special group because all were selfless players. You'll hear about what they have shown during these past years. That proves my point. The senior class. Class, Skylar Ahern. Skylar would be successful in anything that she does. She's selfless, there's that word again, works hard and will do anything for her teammates. She was ready to jump on the starting third base position and would have been our backup pitcher. Skyler was very versatile as she could play in any infield position and any outfield spot as well. Tatiana Bess. Tati is another selfless player who loved to run and smile. It got me a bit nervous when she did both at the same time. Tati will be remembered for her enthusiasm and for her toughness and for loving to play the game. Allie Kostad. In her four years, Allie displayed a lot of energy and an incredible amount of team spirit. She was always ready to play and was a hard person to strike out because she was a great contact hitter and was also clutch. Madison Hebert. Madison was penciled in to be our designated player this season, as she has a strong bat. Her work ethic and determination to become a better player was evident in how she carried herself and the work she put in in the offseason. Alessandra Tardibueno was another versatile player that could have played many infield and outfield positions. Allie carried a consistent bat and a strong arm. Her knowledge of the game was second to none, and that is not something that is often seen by coaches nowadays. Regina Maslag. When I think about Regina, I get a number of funny visuals. Regina was a tough runner, an instinctive outfield, and someone who always brought humor to our team. She was fast runner and a tough competitor. Skylar Wazinski. Skyler was our starting catcher for the past three seasons and was a three-year varsity letter award winner. Skyler's love for the game, and I think we can all say this about most catchers, because why would you wear all that stuff, was evident. She had a lot of pop in her bat and an incredibly strong arm. And Amelia McCarthy. Amelia, Amelia did everything I asked her to do during her four years on the softball team. Play infield, Amelia, she did. Play right field, play center field. Bat right, bat left. Bunt, slap. She did that, and she did it without reluctance and with enthusiasm. As a 12-time Varsity Letter Award winner, Amelia's absence will have a dramatic impact on the programs she's leaving behind. Her leadership and her steadiness is something we will never forget and will be hard to reproduce. And that is our 2020 softball team. Thank you and have a great night. And now we've reached the special awards part of the evening. First up is the Fakanen Award. The Fakanen Award is named after Bob Fuchanan, a member of RHS Class of 1975, who epitomized the award which bears his name. 
As an outstanding football player, a long jumper, and sprinter in track and field, he demonstrated versatility. Bob unfortunately never had the opportunity to reach his potential as an athlete. The day before the state finals in track and field, he lost his life in an automobile accident. A few hours following that accident, the team met and voted to participate in the meet as a tribute to their teammate who had helped them qualify. The Fakanen Award is given in his memory to the most versatile male athlete. The athletes nominated for this award must have participated in at least two different sports for at least seven sports seasons and received at least five varsity letters. The nominees are voted on by the members of the coaching staff. This year's nominees are Jacob Gomez, Christopher Guzman, Jacob Maciag, and Tristan Ramek. The award this year goes to Christopher Guzman. Every now and then we have a special student athlete that comes into our athletic program as a freshman, performs at a high level, and by time they're a senior, achieves academic and athletic success. This year, Amelia McCarthy participated in her 12th varsity athletic season. From the time she was a freshman all the way through her senior season, she's achieved varsity status in volleyball in the fall, basketball in the winter, and softball in the spring, giving her 12 varsity letters. Congratulations, Amelia, on this outstanding achievement, and welcome to an elite club of varsity athletes who have achieved 12 varsity letters. Congratulations. The Balance Award. Debbie Balance was a student at RHS from 1973 to 1976. She was a member of the girls basketball team as well as the softball team during those years. She was an all-around strong player in basketball and was a starting shortstop for the 1974, 75, and 76 championship softball teams. Unfortunately, Debbie's life was cut short in August 79 of lupus disease. The Balance Award is given in her memory to the most versatile female athlete. The nominees for this award must have participated in at least two different sports for at least seven sports seasons and received at least five varsity letters. The nominees are then voted on by the members of the coaching staff. This year's nominees are Skylar Ahern, Erin Augustifer, Mia Capabianco, Gabriella Centurion, Naibuija Kanafu, Regina Maslag, Amelia McCarthy, Kerry O'Keefe, Jenna Rogers, Sarah Scotty, Jenna Severino, and Skylar Wazinski. This year's Balance Award goes to Ms. Jenna Rogers. Congratulations. First off, I'd like to say thank you for nominating me for this award. Um, I'm truly honored to be part of a group of incredible athletes who have received this award before me. To all the other nominees, you guys deserve to be giving this speech just as much as I do, if not more, and congratulations on an incredible athletic career. Thank you, Mr. Frazier, for your constant support for the last four years. Thank you to every teacher, administrator, and coach who continues to support RHS Athletics and for nominating me for this award. I'd like to thank my teammates throughout the years for being the best supporters and for making high school sports the best time. I am absolutely blessed to play sports with my best friends for the past 12 years or so. To the volleyball team, I didn't get the opportunity to truly thank you guys for everything. I can't wait until we are sitting at the RHS Hall of Fame dinner being inducted as a team. We will go down as the best to ever do it. To the track team, thank you all for all the laughs and memories during the hours and meets. I miss you all so much and I would give anything to have one more practice. I'd like to thank the assistant coaches for the lessons you all individually have taught me, not only about sports, but life in general. I will take all of those memories with me for the rest of my life, and I thank you for that. Coach Arcy, it would be hard for me to thank you for everything you have done for me in the past four years. One of the hardest things to teach an athlete is how to have a competitive mindset or how to think like a champion. This aspect of the game is something that I learned a lot from you. You taught me the true meaning of being mentally tough, and that in itself is something I will take to, to my college career and beyond. Thank you a million times over for everything you did for me. Miss A, 
Words don't describe the connection that we built together. Many people have described you as their mom, and yes, you are exactly that, but to me, you are a lot more. You are an inspiration, a role model, a mentor, and a supporter. You are the kindest and most caring person that I've ever met in my life. Life in college without you will probably be beyond difficult, but it calms me to know you're just a text away. Several people have asked why I chose to do track in college instead of volleyball, and to be honest, I've never answered with my honest reason until now. I cannot play volleyball in college simply because there's a 0% chance that it will ever meet the standard that you have provided for me for the past four years. The experiences and the cultures that you've created through the sport of volleyball can never be matched in the future. I wanted to leave the sport with the best season a player could ask for, being coached by the best coach an athlete could dream of having. I can honestly say I left the sport with exactly that. Ms. A, you deserve the absolute world for everything you do. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for absolutely everything. To my parents, mom and dad, thank you for the tall jeans. Those have definitely come in handy. On a more serious note, you guys have given me unconditional support in everything that I do. You guys have been and always will be the two people that believe in me more than I believe in myself. You guys have taught me to be humble and to believe that I will achieve just about anything when I put my mind to it. Thank you for constantly finding me new coaches, trainers, and opportunities to help me succeed. I work every day to try and make you guys proud and I hope that has worked. Patrick, you have this annoying little phrase that you say when I refuse to do anything with you. He asked me to go play basketball and I would say no and he would immediately respond with why not, every single time. From this I learned a huge lesson that he doesn't even know he taught me. Asking yourself why not can completely change your mindset. Why not run the extra mile? Why not go out on the days it's raining? Why not jump six feet? Patrick, you continue to make me proud as a big sister and I can't wait to watch the big things you do as the last Rogers left at RHS. To Jessica, my amazing, talented, and hardworking sister. I looked up to you since day one and you've for sure been a great role model. As a middle schooler, I would watch your games and stare at you in amazement. I would think to myself, man, I wanna be like her one day. Unfortunately, I never reached that goal. Jess, you didn't even receive half the credit that you really deserve. Your constant hard work, talent, and dedication continues to inspire me because I have hopes that I, one day, could be half the athlete and person you are. Ever since the beginning, I wanted to be right by your, your side, copying what you did and walking in your footsteps. I had the honor of entering RHS right after you, and now we share quite a few RHS records together. We, together as sisters, left a pretty large footprint on RHS athletics. Thank you for allowing me to grow up alongside you and learn from all the things you do. I could not ask for a better person to look up to. Thank you to the rest of my family and friends who have been to several games or meets cheering me on, especially my grandpa, who wouldn't miss a game and would always shout my name after every play. Thank you. Finally, I'd like to end this speech with a message to any underclassmen or future athletes. There's nothing better than high school athletics. Do me a favor and the class of 2020 a favor by taking full advantage of the season you have left as an athlete. High school is too short to have doubts about your abilities and you truly never know when it's going to be your last practice, game, or play doing the sport you love. Thank you again to everyone, especially the Bulldog community for the unforgettable times I've had in RHS athletics. Even though I will wear a jersey that has Cornhusker written on the front of it next year, Bulldogs will forever be written in my heart. Thank you. The Borzada Award. Elaine Borzada, class of 1984, was a dedicated athlete who showed leadership and desire on and off the playing field. Elaine was a varsity track athlete in the spring and in the winter and was an honor student. Most of all, Elaine loved soccer. Through her dedication and hard work, she played on two varsity teams that went all the way to the state sectional finals. At the age of 20, Elaine's life came to an untimely end in a car accident in 1987. The Borazada Award is given in her memory to the senior athlete who has demonstrated sportsmanship, dedication, and improvement to his or her sport. The athletes are nominated and voted on by the coaching staff. This year's nominees are Jack Carr, Brian Nguanti, Nyabwija Kenafu, Amy Lee, Jacob Maciag, Amelia McCarthy, and Jen Natelkos.
This year, the winner is Nyabuija Kenefu. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the other nominees who have demonstrated hard work and dedication throughout their athletic career. I am very grateful for receiving this award, but could not have done so without the support of my friends, family, and especially the coaches at RHS. To begin, I'd like to thank the first coach I had as a high school student, Mr. Badia. I've known him since fourth grade when my older sister was on the team, but since then he has done everything in his power to help me improve my game. I knew I could go to Coach P for anything, and I'm glad to have finished my season with him just before his retirement. Next, I would like to give another thank you to the track and field coaching staff. I was not sure what to expect as a freshman entering the season, but knowing the head coach was one of my previous teachers was a great blessing. Coach Arcee has always encouraged me to try different events and constantly assured me that I had more in me than I thought I did. Coach Blake and JVD had me doing some of the hardest workouts, but knowing that they would be standing there right on the sidelines as I ran my race gave me the support I needed to feel confident every time I stepped onto the track. I also cannot forget about Coach AJ, who never sugarcoated the advice he gave and provided that tough love that was needed to get through a hard practice. Again, I am very thankful for receiving such an honor and I'm lucky to have played for a sports program as amazing as the one at RHS. The Bulldog Award, for dedication and service to our athletic program. This year's recipient has been part of our Bulldog family for a few years. He has given time and effort above and beyond what was expected. Excellence, accountability, pride, and family. Those aren't buzzwords. That's what he believed and was expected of his students and his athletes. I've had the fortune to take a chance on this young go-getter that we knew was going to be a success. He built upon an already strong foundation and with his staff taught our athletes what it means to be a champion. He's inspired countless students and especially young men who would run through the proverbial wall for him. Coach Hal joined our staff in 2006 and has been with us the past 14 years. He's embraced our Bulldog family as if it were his own and he was here his whole entire life. He has represented our school and our community with class, dignity, and always did what was in the best interest of our student athletes and our program. He will be sorely missed, but he's going to continue to grow in his professional career and he's taking the position as an assistant principal. I have no doubt that he'll be a success doing that. It's with a heavy heart that we say farewell, but we're not saying goodbye. We know that once you're a Bulldog, you're always a Bulldog. Congratulations to our 2020 Bulldog Award recipient, Coach Andy Howell. Congratulations. What's up, Bulldogs? I hope you and your families are safe and healthy right now. This is certainly not the goodbye that I envisioned. However, I feel so grateful and fortunate to have had the opportunity to coach in such an amazing district for the past 15 years. There's so many that I would like to give thanks to. Let me first by thanking our administration, Mr. Frazier, Mr. Hurley, for bringing me to Rutherford and for supporting me along the way. Coach Morano, yes, before he was Mr. Morano, he was Coach Morano. You've been an excellent mentor. To my staff, my right-hand man, Coach Stone, you look way better in blue than in scarlet, buddy. I know the team couldn't be left in better hands right now. Sil Bastio, Frank Viola, Curtis Arce, Jeff Rehain, Rob Counselor, Carmen Spina, Sean Bach, and others. Thank you for your countless hours of hard work and commitment to our program. Other colleagues, coaches, and friends, Coach A, Coach DeBarry, Coach Parno, and any others that I may have missed, thank you. To my students for making phys ed class so exciting and so much fun for me every single day. To the parents for trusting me with your children and allowing me to, to play such a vital role in the development of them into young men. And most importantly, thank you to all the young men that I've coached over the past 15 years. Thank you for your enormous sacrifices that you've made for something bigger than yourself, for your mental toughness, for your resilience, and for your dedication to our core values. Some of my fondest memories of my life will be from on the gridiron at Rutherford, from the championship games to the fire truck escort down Park Ave, to taking that 7 p.m. walk from the locker room to Tryon Field every Friday night in the fall. 
I can't believe I'm even going to utter these words, but I'm actually going to miss that old, smelly, dirty locker room. I think that's what's made our team so tough over the past couple of years. It's certainly added character. For the past 15 years, I've looked at Rutherford as my home. And all the people that I've worked with every single day are my family. It's a very bittersweet moment for me. However, I just want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. There is no doubt that all of you had played such a crucial role in developing me into the leader that I am today. For the past decade, we've always preached to our football players that playing football for RHS is much greater than just a four-year experience, but it's a family for life. So now, as I embark on my new career journey, I certainly hope that the same applies for me. Once a Bulldog, always a Bulldog. Thanks for the memories, Rutherford. I'll see you soon. Well, we've reached the conclusion of our virtual awards presentation. To all of our award winners, congratulations. To our Booster Club, thank you again for all you do for our coaches and our student athletes. To our parents, thanks for your continued support and your willingness to share your kids with us a few hours a day to help nurture them and teach them in our second home called RHS and to care for them as if they were our own. To our coaches, thank you for making this evening not only a success, but for your efforts both on and off the field, helping to make our teams a success, but also our kids better people. And finally, to our student athletes. Your hard work and your dedication always seems to make us Bulldog proud. To our seniors, I wish we could have watched you this season. I know you were ready to show the world how high you could soar. I know you didn't get the opportunity to have your last dance, to end your academic or your athletic journey the way you had envisioned it. But I hope one day you can look back at this and see it as the challenge that it was and show the world that you've overcome it to make it so that you're an even stronger person. When you look back at this, I hope you say, I had friends, family, teachers, and a school community that was there to support me the best way possible. And hopefully in the end, you look back at this as a time that made you better and even a stronger person. I wish you all the best in all that you do. And once again, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. Thank you all, and good night. And next up, coached by Mr. Stephen Dunn, our Boys and Girls Varsity Swim Program. Daddy, it's time to eat. You see I'm recording? What's for dinner, anyway? Uh, I don't know. Who's cooking? I am. <laughs> you are? Like... I'm ordering takeout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must have my glasses on. It looks a heck of a lot clear, more clear. And this year's winners are... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rutherford High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome Daddy to the night. Phone. What? Who's on the phone? Jimmy Fallon. Jeez. Well, Tony's got to wait. I'm doing a virtual recording. Jeez. <laughs>